Hello everyone, Mark here. Welcome back to my garage. So, it's time for, well, this could either be part one or part two, depending on how you look at it, of uh, the uh, PM Research milling machine kit. Now today, I'm going to do a small casting. I'm going to have a go at it. It looks like it's the simplest casting of the lot, so, uh, you know, I'm chickening out and uh, doing the smallest and most simplest looking thing first. So, uh, I'll bring the uh, camera over to the bench and you can have a look at the uh, drawings as to uh, what this casting is and what needs to be done. So this is what I'm going to do first. It's, um, as you can see, it's the bracket casting. This holds the um, adjustable uh, stepped belt in this spot here, uh, the stepped pulley for the uh, power feed on the table. So, the actual casting itself looks like that. I'll hold it the right way around. So it's that, and, uh, and this is uh, not to scale, um, as you can see. Although actually, uh, this is a photo I've taken of the actual plans, because the whole thing's like an A0 piece of paper. I can't really fit it here. Um, this actually, in, in the main plans is to scale this drawing but I've blown it up so I can read it better and also uh, it's a, just then a piece of scrap paper I can make drawings and notes on it if I need to. This is what I need to machine, make itself, so uh, that is it. Um, as you can see there's quite a bit of flash left on this. Not to mention as well there's a significant uh, step issue here, it looks like the casting paths weren't aligned properly. Um, when this bit was done here, there's quite a significant ridge there. Um, so yeah, I think the first step I'm going to do is just go all over it with a file and just take off all the flashing um, that's around these various edges here and just, just clean it up a bit so I've got a nice surface to start working from. Because it's tight quarters, I'm going to make use of a small needle file. This is going to be a square one to be able to get in and just clean up this bottom face here. Next bit I'm going to do will be sped up because you don't need to watch every moment in real time of me filing some edges. Just like that, it's now all the flashing has been removed, contours have been brought to size and I've got rid of the mismatched step that there was in the casting. Um, don't need to worry about these parting lines here because these faces all need to be machined. So um, fixturing this is going to be interesting to figure out how to actually machine these slots. I'm going to obviously have to use the side of an end mill to do those, which is fair enough to me. And the same with this one's probably going to have to be on the side as well. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun, this. Let's, uh, let's go over to the little mill and, uh, look at how I'm going to fix this up in the mill as to how I'm going to cut it. So, got it set up here in the mill. Um, if I sound different or if something looks a bit different over here, it's because right now, since the previous clip, three weeks have passed because... This here is a new motor for this mill. If you follow my social media, you will be aware that um, I uh, turned on the old original motor for this lathe mill and it spun three times, there was a loud bang and a flash of light and the motor was no more. Now, as it turns out, one of its brushes shattered inside and... Um, while I could have found some more brushes, replaced it, that motor was always underpowered for a machine like this that actually I want it to do real work with. Now, it's a great motor still. I've checked it out inside. Once the brushes have been cleaned out, which I have done, 
it's still a great motor. So it's it's great for a collector, for example, because it's an original motor. So I am thinking of selling the old motor. As I said, currently it doesn't run, but that's only because it needs new brushes. That's literally all it needs is new brushes. So if any of you watching are interested in collecting motors or you want to find a motor, an old original motor for one of these MCOs and don't mind just replacing some uh, brushes, please do uh, um, leave a comment um, or go to the About section on the site on the uh, YouTube page and uh, get my business email address from there and you can uh, send me a, an email and I'll uh, I'll get back to you with uh, with uh, what's what with that motor so yeah so anyway this new one is a wonderful piece of kit it's made by PJ tools uh, it happens to be a drop-in replacement and one great thing about it is it is variable speed that's amazing that, uh, it's not just a two speed it is completely variable speed which is rather nice and it's more powerful it's got a uh, it's a 200 watt motor and it's got at least an hour duty cycle rating on it which is well that's amazing much better than the original anywho that's enough about the uh, backstory i've got the casting in the vise i've squared it up so that these two here these two bosses are as straight vertically as possible because there needs to be a shaft that runs through there and carries that holds a set of uh, a step pulley in there for the uh, power feed for the table on the mill now that needs to be in my opinion as far as I can tell from the drawings needs to be uh, a perpendicular to this face on here because at the end of the day that needs to be at a perpendicular drive angle to how this is mounted on the casting body and the body casting for the actual um, mill itself the actual stand casting so what I'm going to do I'm going to start off by just uh, decking this here the top of this boss down to a nice finished dimension all the way across basically so it's a continual flat curve from there straight across so there's not a step for a boss as it were because according to the drawings that's how it should be so um I've put a cutter in there. I just picked one at random um, because I'm just doing deck, a decking cut here. It doesn't matter the actual size of it. It's not trying to fit into a slot or drill a hole with it. Um, yes, before you go nuts at me, I know it's in a drill chuck. And I will repeat once again, I don't have any form of other work holding for this machine. I mean, um, a tool holding rather. All I have is this drill chuck. I do not have a collet chuck, and right now I can't afford a collet chuck because they are ridiculously expensive for what they are. So, without further ado, let me spin her up and uh, touch off and uh, we'll get sorted there. Start off by plugging it in. Make sure the speed's turned down to start with, and let's get her going. So as you can see now, it can go from this slow speed, which is amazing, but it can also Been up to there, which is rather nice. So let's bring bring her down till she touches. There's the touch off. I'm gonna move out the way a bit. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit like that, and I'm gonna slowly bring this back across because I don't want to be climb milling on this let's see how we do Okay, I'm actually going to take it down a bit further because that barely touched it, so let's take it down a little bit more. There we go, and let's try that again.
let's go down a little bit more. There we go, that amount. And just take this across. I'm taking it very light passes, at least at this start point, just so that I can make sure that it's going to uh, not grab and there's nothing funky going on with this cutter. It's a nice cutter, I quite like this cutter. It's got nice sharp, I will admit that, it's nice and sharp. So there we go, that cut all the way across there nicely. Okay. Oh, caught the camera there, sorry guys. Let's back this up a bit. Back it up to there, and let's go back across again. Take it nice and slow. a bit further. Let's bring it to there. And let's bring it back across again. is the beauty of aluminium. It does cut quite well. And then bring it across again to there. And this in theory should clear up the rest of that foss. Lovely. Now as you can see that is nicely decked across the top of there. As I'm running my hand across there, yes you can see the tool marks, the passes, sorry my hand was completely covering it there. Yes you can see the tool passes there. You can't feel them though, not even with a fingernail. So that's wonderful. I mean maybe the head might need tramming slightly but from what I can tell right there it seems fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few more passes across this now to bring it down. I'm not going to show all of it to you because, um, well, quite frankly, that would bore you all to death. And I don't want to do that. So what I might do is just do a few passes on the next pass. For instance, I'll show you the next pass uh, in a bit of speeded up footage, shall we?
Okay, so that's now got that deck down. Now you can see a step at the edge there. Let me see if I've got something to point with. Let me use an Allen key. So there's a step on this edge right here. Now, that is because I haven't filed the curve here yet. There's still flashing in the centre there from the casting process. So once I've filed that, it'll be a nice smooth radius now. I can trace the edge of the radius and it, it meets nicely with this surface now. So this is now the finished surface. So that's rather nice. That's that's finished. So next step now is to take this out and turn it over so I can do the other size and bring the boss to thickness. OK, I've got it flipped over. And the way I'm going to make sure that it's parallel with the other machine face on there is a neat little trick that I learned from my granddad. When you buy uh, high-speed steel tool bits, usually um, they are perfectly square. They're ground square, which is nice, which means I can do what I just did and use it as a parallel as I push this down there, holds it nice and square to the fixture at the back, and therefore means that this top face here will be perfectly square, parallel with the other face on the bottom. So that worked nicely there. And um, then you can just visually check to make sure that, again, these two bosses on the end here also line up completely vertically, which they do. So I know this is now on perfectly square. So this total thickness of this needs to be 188 thou, I think. Yes, 188 thou. So I've got quite a bit to come off here yet because uh, this is significantly more than 188 thou. Let me grab me, 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 me calipers for a rough guesstimate right now. Roughly right now, that is 300,000. So I've got quite a bit to come off there yet. Although, as you can see, a lot of that is still the gate left over from when they cast the part. So that's the first thing to take off. So let's bring the cutter back down. Let's bring it to there, put that in place, and let's bring me piece in. Again, I don't want to be climb milling on this, I want to be conventionally milling. So, oh, I'm sorry guys, I keep catching the camera, it's a bit close quarters in this area. I don't have much space to work with. There we go, that's over the part. I'm actually going to drop the whole head down a bit further. There we go. So it's not as far to go on the fine feed. And then I'll just uh, bring the fine feed down a bit. So I'm in the ballpark at least. Bring this down. Okay, that's close now. Let's, uh, and what I'll do is I'll, uh, let's do another bit of fast forward bit, shall we? And uh, me taking, or at least starting to do the cutting on here. And just like that, there it is, all nicely brought to dimension. Let me uh, double check this measurement on camera so I can prove to you that I'm not bullshitting. Make 
sure I got a nice reading on that. No, that moved. Perfect dimension. 188 thou. That is spot on. Which, considering this is a metric machine with metric divisions on it, and I had to guess the divisions up here on the fine feed by eye, I'm quite proud of that. So, now that boss is perfect to size, I now need to work out dimensions from that point on there, which is this boss here. I now need to use this dimension here to calculate that point there. Now, according to this, these dimensions are not finished dimensions. However, they look like utter garbage on here. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, seeing as there is no there is no measurement for this, so the, there's no measurement between this outer edge here and this dimension here. It doesn't give you that measurement and it doesn't give you the width of the thickness of these either. So I'm just going to basically clean up the faces on these either side just to make them nice and neat as they should be. Just get rid of the outer casting like the flashing and stuff. And just basically deck, just just essentially just deck the, just dust the top of them a bit, just to make them nice and uh, nice and clean and look, make them look respectable. Because at the end of the day, also it's about how they look as well. So that's the main thing. That cleaned up beautifully. That's nice. I was able to do that in one pass. Well, I say one pass. I mean one depth all the way across. That is beautifully tidied up that. And now also I know that these two faces are completely uh, on the same le on the same uh, plane as each other. So if ever I need to reference them for anything, I know that they are both in the same plane just at different heights. So that's that's a, a thumbs up, that. That's a big thumbs up, a blurry thumbs up, a thumbs up. Lovely. Okay, so I've got you in as close as I can get. And I'm just going to now also just dust the top of this side. Again, on the drawing, there's no dimension on this. So I'm just doing, I'm actually adding this as an aesthetic touch, personally. So let's give this a shot, shall we? And there we go. So that has just tidied up both of those opposing faces on those bosses now. So that will mean now, thankfully, that uh, those are nice and then just nice and aesthetically pleasing. Which uh, at the end of the day, this machine is uh, yes, it's a working machine, but also it's it's got to be a nice model as well. And well, I want to make it look fancy. So the next step now is I need to get it out of the vise in this position and uh, work out how I'm going to fixture it to mill the slot in the actual depth between the two bosses themselves. Okay, it's a bit of an unconventional solution, I agree, but uh, it's basically the only way I've got of doing this. And the, the these there's just no way of holding this this casting otherwise so I'm going to take really light cuts and just take it slow because otherwise it's just going to ring and vibrate completely and it's going to be an absolute nightmare I mean as it is it may do anyway and I might have to think of another way but 
hopefully with this being aluminium at least it's going to be soft and it but i know for a fact it is soft from doing the other milling but i'm gonna this is basically the best option i've got so uh let's give it a little shot shall we Okay, I'm just going to bring this back out of the way because now I need to actually measure the distance between this rear face here and that there because that is the distance that is listed on the dimensions and that needs to be 438 thou. So I need to get something, I need to get a straight edge to go here. So let me get my set squares out because that's the best straight edge, known straight edge that I have. I don't want a massive chonky one, so a massive long one, but that one will do, which is the number one. Oh blimey, that's a good fart that one. So then what I need to do is use that on there like that and then measure between there and there which is going to be fun. Trying to get in here with the camera in the way as well. It's also going to be a nightmare. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to do this with a camera here, guys. I'm ever so sorry. I think I'm going to have to move the camera. Yeah, I'm going to have to move the camera, guys. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to see this bit because I just haven't got the room to get in. Okay, I've done my measurements now. Sorry, I just couldn't get in with the camera there, guys. I do apologise for that. Um, I'll bring a different camera angle in once I've got it milled to size so I can show you how I was doing the measurements. And uh, hopefully people won't crucify me for how I was doing it. So I think what I'm going to do now is just uh, go through another bit of a time lapse of just uh, bringing this, these two bosses into the correct size. Okay, so I've got the back one, I don't know if you can see, that is now all uh, machined to final size. I now need to make this the ins this side of this one to the correct size as well. And that, according to the print, the dimension between the two should be 473 thou. So I am going to, uh, I'm just going to move the carriage that way obviously until I touch this side of the cutter and on it and then uh, start working my way through it. Um, yeah, let's get on with it shall we? So let's bring this across, bring this in, turn it on, bring it in and then wind this back until there's the touch off. Wind this back. Now this is going. Actually, I've just realised this is going to be climb milling, but I've got no chance. I've got no choice because of where it is. Actually, no. I'm an idiot. Let me come away from it. Come in past the boss. There we go. See, I'm not a complete loony. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Again, tight quarters. Just take the slack out, bring this across. Yep, that's touching. Let's bring it towards me by that amount. And let's give her a cut.
Right, let's wind that out so I can get my measuring tool on it, otherwise known as the gallopers. Let's clean off that cutter as well because it's loading up a bit there. Well, it's certainly looking the part, isn't it? Looking like a, uh, a machined part to me. This needs to be 473. We're not quite there yet. Got a bit more to go yet. I'd say let's find out how much further to go. Got 10, 15, about 16 thou left to go on that. So let's uh, give her a bit more of a cut. a bit there. Don't want to get all the shavings underneath and stuck in the ways. Let's go again. Okay. Let's bring this out here a bit so I can measure it again. Let's clean off the tool again. And the bed. Clean off everything. Makes it easier to read things. And you don't get bits stuck in your stuck in your measuring equipment either. So let's come in here. That's currently four six nine six nine seven. Seven one seven two seven three. So that's four thou. We're gonna take out now. An additional four thou. And I've noticed it's actually cutting into the the beam itself, the back edge of this beam now. So it looks like this wasn't cast correctly because I've measured the depths and things across here. Obviously, from this this back edge here to this internal edge here is measured I perfectly correctly. It's, you know, to the thou accurate, and uh, so obviously there was some uh, issue with the width of this spacing when they cast the material, when they actually cast the part. So, uh, improvisation is the key here. Hmm, let me try something. Turn that on. I'm going to climb mill back into that corner on the front here. Just to make that look nice and aesthetically pleasing. Bring that back out nice and slow, conventionally milling. catching the camera I apologize for everyone it's just so hard to see in here okay let's measure that again now
Okay, yeah, that's still the same size. So what I'm going to try and do actually is take a little bit more off the back. Primarily because I'm digging into this side. I want to make it at least even on both sides so it looks aesthetically pleasing. I don't want it all one-sided. Because that's going to suck and I don't really want to take any more out of this side. Oh my god, I keep catching the bleeding camera. God, I hate this camera setup at times. All right, let's come in here. Let's come back in. Let's get this touched off in here again. There we go. That actually, by fluke, is correct. That's the dimension hit exactly. Perfect. So the dimension inside there now is correct. However, the dimension now from that side to that side is not. But actually, the I took more off this side anyway. So, eh. It is what it is, I suppose. There's not really much more I can do about that. So, uh, yeah. Let's... Um, I would call that a, a successful milling operation. The only things left to do on this now are to drill uh, three holes in it. Um, one, one through here, one through here. They both obviously need to be perfectly uh, in line, straight down. And then one hole through the main boss at the back here. So let's uh, get this out of here and uh, let's, I'll take you over to the bench and show you it in more detail. Okay. And there it is at the vise. As you can see now, it is all nicely machined. So these faces now are machined, as you can see. And like I said, these outer faces here weren't called to be machined in the uh, actual, in the print, but uh, I think they look more aesthetically pleasing, machined and just dusted off the top like that. Um, it just, in my opinion, makes it look nicer uh, when the machine's done. Because there is obviously a shaft that goes through here to hold the pulleys that go in here. That holds the pulley that's in here, the step pulley. So uh, it's nice to have machined faces on both sides rather than just raw casting. And there's the other machined face there, with the two. So this will mount on the back of the column. So as the column's straight up vertically here, it would mount there like that, sticking off the back. Dry it with a step pulley here, coming off like that. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful that. Super. So yeah, what I've got to do now is drill a, just drill a hole. It's perfectly in line with both of them, so it's nice and straight through there. It's also then parallel with this face here. And uh, to do that, to put it in the vise, I will do the same as I did when I was flipping over to make sure that I got these two completely parallel, which is uh, just using a bit of uh, parallel material against the flat jaw to rest it on, make sure they're both co-playing with each other. So yeah, next stage then, drill some holes and that's this part will be finished. So I've got a centre drill in there now and I've, I've marked it up where it needs to be. Um, that's according to how the instructions say to do it is to the centre of the boss. Well that's about as centre as I can manage to get it. I measured the width of the boss, measured in all directions. Um, came with that and it's as its centre point, so uh, uh, that's basically as best as I can do. It needs to go through, I uh, need a 125 thou diameter drill to go through it, both of them perfectly in line. So uh, I've got the centre bit in there, let's give it a whirl shall we?
Well, that looks nicely centered to me. Perfect. Now I can make use of the new repeatable uh, Z travel feature because I can raise the head up like that while it's still being kept in the right point and change the bit out. Which means I can now put my 125 thou bit in or eighth inch. Then I can bring the head on down again. Whoa, hey. Make sure it's pushed over to the location feature, which I have. And that now, once again, it's perfectly in line. Beautiful, truly beautiful. Right, let's give this a shot, shall we? And through it goes. And there we go. Just like that. Both of those should be perfectly in line. Okay, look at the bottom one. The casting is not even, which is a little frustrating. But in, they are both in line, which is the uh, the main aim of the game, they have to be perfectly in line with each other. So, that, as they say, is that. Very nice. Now I've just got to do the big old weir, and then it's done. Okay, so now I've got to go through this boss here um, with a number 32 drill bit. I don't have any numbered drill bits at all at the moment, so I'm just having to use conversion charts online. And as it turns out, that size is pretty much a three millimeter by like there's the difference is like a thou difference or maybe point even a couple of tenths difference so i'm going to use a three mil drill bit in a substitute if necessary i could open it out at a later date if i need to with a reamer but for the moment start off with the center drill And there we have it. One hole straight through the center. Perfecto. A true blast. That's rather nice, that. Nice little hole in there. Take my drill bit out so I don't stab myself with it. And let's just uh, go in here and just clean that up a bit. That's nice, that. Nice hole through the centre of that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, there we have it. Out the machine. Debird. All good to go. That is the first part machine. All to the correct sizes and everything. I have discovered that the drill bit I used to make the shaft, the line through there, it's uh, a piece of dog shit and uh, has bought it. It, it. It's obviously a bent drill bit. That or the there's a problem with the mill. It's not drilling straight vertically down. I don't see how. Cause it got a, using the quill and it's nice and tight. So I don't see how that's the problem. But all that I know is, I don't know if you can see there, but that the other side of the boss is not on center. So I'm a little bit cross at that. In fact, no, to tell you the truth, I'm absolutely livid at that. Um, but it's done. There's not a great deal I can do about it now. I can't put it back. So I'm pissed off about that now. But, you know, got to love, uh, got to love cheap, bloody drill bits, haven't you? 
Well, from this point on, I am buying a set of drill bits. It's as simple as that. I'm buying a set of Dorma drill bits. I don't care. It's going to be Dorma from now on. <laughs> Dorma all the way, proper drill bits. And next time, I'm going to use some other way of clamping it before I drill it. I might even use my main big drill press next time, not my little mini mill for doing it. But yeah, either way. Not going to lie, I'm still happy though that it's all machined and the rest of it's all machined. And everything's to the right sizes, so that's the main thing. The rest of it's all machined correctly, so that's 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 the beautiful thing. That's the main thing. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this uh, first part of the uh, milling machine build project. Uh, I know it's been a little while since the announcement video, and as I said in the beginning of this video, I do apologise, but my mill exploded halfway through doing it, so that took some time. Stay tuned for ready for part two. I'm not sure what part I'll tackle next. Probably uh, one of the shafts or like a handle or something like that, one of the little handles. I think some lathe work next. Put it that way, some lathe work. Thank you once again for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, give me the thumbs up. And if you really liked it and you want to see more content from me, make sure to uh, click that subscribe button and also click that little bell symbol to turn on notifications as well. Thank you very much. Stay safe, everyone, and I will see you next time. Cheerio.